block, now you know I'm coming through When the growth look good on you, best believe they wanna screw now I've been trying to climb, devil threw me in the dark Baby, don't be insecure, you can still go make a mark like Blow. Could never let them drain my soul now Table turning like doorknobs, wow Blow. I think I'm about to set sail I'm a walking living legend, walking with my chest yeah. now Life keeps dealing me cards Always with the rookie mistakes, man. Always with the rookie mistakes. But what's going on, people? It's G. We are back in the building. Um, here for a quick match preview. Uh, Liverpool versus Atalanta in the Europa League. Guys, please make sure if you're over here on YouTube. Heck, if you're on Twitter as well, man. Jump across to YouTube and make sure you're smashing that like button. Of course, we are now back to Liverpool playing. We're done with all the top-level Champions League football that we've seen over the last couple of days. <clears throat> of course, Arsenal versus Bayern Munich, Madrid versus City, Dortmund, Atletico Madrid, um, PSG versus Barca, Lona. Some interesting games, <clears throat> some interesting games within that. But now it's time for the real football. Now it's time for the real football. Liverpool versus Atalanta. Um, should be an interesting game. Should be a really, really interesting game. Um, I think... With these kind of ties, especially because Liverpool have been, you know, we face Toulouse, USG, uh, you know, them kind of Sparta Prague, like them kind of teams. From when we faced off against those teams, I think, you know, we've kind of looked at it and just thought, eh, you know what, this Europa League, this thing is a bit, is a bit easy. You know what I mean? Man's playing Kwanzaa, Bradleys and, you know, people of that kind of ilk who've been able to kind of show their ability and skills within that tournament. And we've seen what that's then done for Liverpool moving forward. They've become, you know, a part of the first team. We've been able to rotate in other areas of the pitch. Some players have not even really been needed. Um, so, you know, it's been a good competition for Liverpool so far. Would I say this is the first real test? Um, if I'm looking at all the teams that we face so far, I'd probably say, yeah. I'd probably say, yeah, this is probably the the biggest test that we've had in the tournament so far. I mean, you know, Atalanta, I'm not trying to make out like there's some amazing team or anything like that, but they're no mugs. They're definitely no mugs. Of course, they beat Sporting, <laughs> Ruben Amarim, Sporting in the last round. So clearly they must be good, right? They must be good if we're, if they're beating the team of the manager that we want. But of course, that's neither here nor there. Just go, you know, quickly through a bit of news, uh, looking a little bit at Atalanta's lineup, um, then give you my predicted lineup for the game. And then we will go through score predictions. Again, guys, please make sure if you're in the chat, make sure you're smashing that like button. Big up, Kevin Mark in the bill. Dim. So I took a look at Atalanta's team. You know, I was having a little. Um, a little look at what their kind of formation is, the the kind of style that they kind of want to go with. And one of the things that I notice about them is that they are quite aggressive. They are quite an aggressive team. Um, they will camp if they need to um, in that in that um, in the defense, but they've got their nice little setup. So it'll be interesting to see kind of how Liverpool set up against that. Now, this is them. This is Atalanta's last game. Um, they faced off against uh, Cagliari. Uh, they lost 2-1, actually, in the game. And this is obviously their lineup. So they like to go over three at the back. We're, we're seeing a lot of this Liverpool, or not even Liverpool, we're seeing a lot of teams now. I don't know if it's just we're noticing it more. I, I mean, of course, they've been playing it for God knows how long, but I don't know if it's a case of just we're noticing it more or whatever it is, but we're seeing a lot of this three at the back stuff. And hey, Liverpool might be a part of that three at the back gang. But we can see here where they have got that, you know, the three at the back. One of the players, of course, who will stand out and most people will know is uh, the two strikers, actually, um, Lookman and Skamaka. Now, Skamaka obviously was at West Ham last season. Didn't really work out for him um, at West Ham, which was always a bit weird because you could see that he had talent. You can see that he had ability and things like that. But at the same time, it was a little bit like it just the the shoe just didn't really fit. You know the style of David Moyes. He wants the Mikel Antonio type of striker. I just want the guy who's going to be able to run long, 
you know, close down defenders and, you know, run all day, press this, that and the third. It's almost like he couldn't really deal with someone so technical. You know, that's why it's even amazing that I'm seeing that Jared Bowen. But again, Bowen at times will push out to the right. He will press at times. Of course, he's got that technical ability. But I just felt like they didn't really use Skamaka that well, in my personal opinion. But, you know, it is what it is. He he then, of course, moved on to Atalanta. And, you know, Lookman, we've seen Lookman, you know, in and out of the Premier League for the throughout his whole career. Um, to be honest with you, but I feel like now with Lookman, of course, things may change. Football, you know, is a, it's a forever moving kind of business. He could move on at the end of the season, for all I know. But it almost feels like he's kind of found his way. Like the way that they speak about, from what I've seen, again, if there's any Atalanta fans out there, they'll be able to tell tell me better. But from the things I've seen that they speak about Lookman, they, you know what I mean? They like him, you know, up top, he works hard. You know, he's someone who's comfortable on the ball. He's pacey, so he can get in behind. So, again, that's definitely going to be something that we're going to need to be wary of. You can see he's playing on that left-hand side. That's kind of the area that he probably, if he is playing, you know, in the game, we'll take a look at the players who are not available um, for this fixture. But if he is playing in that game, that that our right-hand side, we've just got to be careful. How many times have we said that this season about Liverpool's right-hand side? So it'll be interesting to see who Klopp actually goes with uh, for this evening's game. But what another name that actually made me laugh <laughs> was in defence, as you guys can see in the left centre-back area, Kalasinic. I said, Kalasinic plays for Atalanta. Yeah, that's how you know. That's how you know. That's how you know, man. Um, of course, formerly of um, Arsenal, formerly of Schalke um, as well. Again, he slots in there in that left centre uh, left centre back um, position. Um, I think the other player that I wanted to look at was Zappa Costa. You know, he was another player. Um, I believe he was at Chelsea um, previously. So again, they got some noticeable players that we would look at and think, okay, cool. But for me, it is more. I would say the three guys that you can see in that kind of attacking midfield and the two strikers that they may potentially play. Again, it might be a little bit of a different setup. Of course, you can see they've got three, four, one, two. But I think when they come to Anfield, I think it'll be more of a five in the middle, three, uh, five at the back, three in the middle. And then Lookman, if he does play in the game, it'll be kind of floating, you know, in and around. But Coop Miners is another player as well. We, we all remember the kind of links. Um, well, I say links. Let's just say Liverpool fans, we were desperate. We wanted a midfielder. We were crying out for a midfielder. We we were desperate. And we were look. when I think back to some of the players that we were linked with back then, Jesus Christ. And, and if you see what, what they've done at this current moment in time in their careers, I promise you, you lot will laugh. I promise you, you lot will laugh. So it's interesting to see what they've been doing. But Kuman is, of course, is still there. Pick up Angel inside the building. Uh, Lookman do is in the who is in the domestic double season. He scored less, He scored for Leicester, handing us our second defeat of the season. That's what I'm saying, man. You've got to be careful with someone like Lutman. Big up Hollywood Rock. Um, I voted uh, Liverpool win, but I think it won't be easy. 2-1 tight game. Yeah, that, honestly, I, I, I genuinely believe it's not going to be as simple. But again, it all really depends for me anyway as to what Liverpool kind of turn up, if I'm being totally honest. It, that, that will all depend um, on that. So we can see here uh, the players who, from what they say, will not play. One player from Atalanta who um, I remember speaking to Enns um, about this yesterday, who I really wanted to see play for Atalanta, was Scalvini. Um, so it's obviously unfortunate that he won't be able to play in the game. You can see for Liverpool, they've got Baitecic, Matip, Thiago, of course. Um, I don't see these guys, well, I don't see Baitecic playing. I know Klopp spoke about um, a couple of the players who may potentially be back for the game, but I don't feel like they're by Tetrich anyway, out of the three that's on there, I don't see that. The ones who are questionable again, Trent, Allison, Diogo Jota. Again, I don't know if they would play in this game, if I'm being totally honest with you. Maybe, well, Allison, no, I think he'll go with Kelleher regardless anyway, just because of the nature of the competition. But Trent and Diogo Jota, would you risk it? Especially with Diogo Jota, we know his injury kind of history is a bit fugazi and stuff like that. So I don't know if he's going to want to trust it in that kind of sense. So, you know, we just kind of have to kind of have to wait and see, man. Uh, Kevin, uh, Klopp is going to get the inhalers. Probably Liverpool will kill them and rest their key players in the second leg. That's obviously the ideal thing, if I'm being totally honest. That that would be the ideal. You slap them 5-6-0. 5-6-1 or whatever, because I feel like they probably would score because it's just typical Liverpool. But 
yeah, you, you you hope that that's what would happen. And then in the second leg, especially because we were on this title kind of running, we do want to be able to rest a couple of the players. We don't want it to be a situation whereby we're having to use some of our main players in the second leg. And then we've got a fixture coming up in the Premier League a few days later. It's not really what you want, if I'm being totally honest with you. So, yeah, hopefully. Hopefully that's what happens. Uh, if the game is tight and narrow, it helps our cause as Arsenal fans challenging for the title. And exactly, this is what I'm saying. We don't want to help you uh, for the title, if I'm being totally honest with you. Um, <laughs> if I'm being honest, I really don't want to be helping Arsenal any way, shape or form. Uh, Klopp obviously had his press conference yesterday, you know, just speaking about um, a few bits and bobs in regards to players coming back. Um, so he spoke here. This is just a little quote taken. Alexander Arnold and Diogo Jota worked as a group since two or three weeks ago and could really do proper training. Alisson is on the way back by Tetrich is different because he was out for longer. If you guys remember, he did mention um, about by Tetrich playing in the under 21s, hence why I, he's not playing in this game. Um, at all. And I think it's better that way if we do have by Tetrich in the under 21s for a little bit, um, whether that's a game or two whatever that might be, hopefully, just to see what he's like in, you know, just in matches. Um, is his fitness okay? Uh, is he going to break down after his first, say, 90-minute game? You, we have no idea. You don't want to put him in to the first team and then all of a sudden this guy breaks down. And then, you know, that will just hinder his development way too much. And from what it seems like Liverpool hold by Tetrich in high regard. So we definitely want to be making sure that we kind of not wrap him in cotton wool because he's not a Thiago or Naby Keita, Oxlade-Chamberlain type of guy. But with the injury that he has had, you just want to make sure that everything, you know, is going to be okay. So, yeah, we'll kind of um, hopefully wait and see on that. So taking a look at a couple of the players. So this is Coop Miners here. This is his heat map. Um, from this season. You can see the kind of areas of the pitch that he likes to occupy. You can see their areas of danger he likes to occupy. Um, kind of really all across that. In attacking midfield, wide left, wide right, he's kind of all over the gaff. So I think, again, this might just be someone, again, if he plays, this might just be someone I think Liverpool just going to need to keep their eye on, if I'm being honest. I I'm more concerned with the front three because I feel like what they're going to try and do is which never works for most teams, but they're going to try and soak up pressure, so to speak, you know, because I feel like Liverpool will be quite intense in the, from the kickoff. Hopefully, hopefully, hopefully we're going to be intense from the kickoff. If we are, players like Coop Miners, and then, of course, here, um, Adamola Lookman, who's obviously, again, like I said, on that left-hand side, our right-hand side, these are the kind of players that you just need to make sure you're keeping an eye on. Lookman is quick. I'll tell you that right now. Lookman is quick. So he can get in behind and he's good with the ball to feet as well. So this isn't just like a player who's, oh, he's just quick and you ain't got to re realistically worry about him. No, he is relatively decent with the ball at his feet. So you just need to just kind of mind it a little bit, if I'm being totally honest with you. That, that That's just my, you know, my opinion. So I've got here their average position. Now, this is from a game that they played against Napoli. So like I said, they lost their last game 2-1. Uh, this is their lineup <clears throat> average positions against Napoli. They ended up winning that game 3 0 away to Napoli. I know Napoli are in their own problems and stuff like that, but still, <clears throat> it was, excuse me, it was interesting to see the way that they did line up in that game. Again, with the same kind of, you know, three at the back, and then they've got their two wing backs. Um, and then, of course, the two central midfielders with the one in front and then the two strikers. But in this game, Lookman didn't actually play, or he didn't actually start. In this game, they actually had Skamaka and someone else. I can't remember the other the other striker's name, but you can see the areas of positions. They were quite a solid unit. In I watched the highlights of that game. They were kind of a solid unit in that game. Again, what they what I saw from what I saw of the game and what I saw from the highlights is that they soaked up pressure against a better team. They ended up soaking up pressure, and that was something that I thought, mm, okay, is this what they're going to try? Napoli had chances in the game. Obviously, Napoli's fault if they don't score. But is that we don't want the same thing with Liverpool. We've seen recently what's been happening, having chances, 30 shots a game, but not winning these type of games. You know, that's always going to be that's always going to be an issue. So Napoli, Napoli, Atalanta are going to be in their shape. It's up to us to be able to find the solution. Whether we can or not, again, that that remains to be seen. We've seen recently how that's kind of worked out, if I'm being totally honest. So. Yeah, that, that's where I look at um, Atalanta and I just think to myself, hmm, I just want Liverpool to make sure 
<clears throat> it's all well and good playing, you know, patiently and stuff like that. But when you do get those moments, we do need to be killing these kind of teams off. Maybe this might be the fixture this evening where we just, all the chances that we do have, not all, but, you know, most of the chances that we do have, we end up scoring them this time, as opposed to what's been happening recently, which is getting all the chances and not scoring, you know. So let's wait and see. Let's wait and see. Last time we faced them, of course, we lost 2-0. We ended up beating them, of course, uh, 5-0. Um, at their place, but we lost 2-0 uh, last time. They had, they had a very, very good, good, good team um, back then. I remember Atalanta were like, there's always one team in Europe, if you guys if you guys realise, there's always that one team that you're, every, everyone's kind of like, oh, that's like my second team, or if you've got a second team, that's like my third team kind of thing. Or I like watching these guys play because of the way, you know, that they play kind of thing. And Atalanta, at a, a two-year period, I would say, they were everyone's kind of team because they were quite surprising you know, um, in the way that they did actually play and in the way that they were actually surprising Europe. I felt like, OK, cool, this is a decent team. If they can just add a few pieces to that kind of lineup, hey, who, who knows what we may see? So, yeah, interesting to see, interesting to see. Big up again, everybody in the damn builder. Make sure you are smashing that like. My brother, my brother, my brother, my brother, Bakes, logged in at work. I <laughs> said, big up my bro. Loving it, loving it, loving it, man. Make sure, make sure your work um doesn't see you on YouTube and that, you know what I mean, messing around. They might think you're doing something else, bro. Uh, big up Philip in the morning, morning, my bro. I hope everyone's, I hope everyone's had a good morning, had a good night's rest. You know what I mean? I know it is early in the morning here in the UK, but I just hope everyone's blessed. You know what I mean? Uh, big up Steph, uh, great consistency. Yeah, bro, I'm trying, man. I'm trying. I said I had a, a bit of free time to myself um over these next couple of weeks. And I said, you know what? Why not? kick it off in the morning just with some football talk, you know, kind of thing, you know, why not try and see, you know, who's available in the morning, uh, what everybody's up to in the morning and, you know, all of that kind of good stuff. Um, also as well, I'm sure, I'm sure after this video, cause I'm, I'm not going to keep you guys too long after this video, if ends is still doing a space, uh, make sure you guys head on over there as well to have a little listen. I'm sure in that conversation and if ends is watching, he knows what I'm about to say. I'm sure he will mention Salah at least once in that conversation. Let me know if he does, by the way. Let me know. Uh, you don't get in life what you want. You get what you work for. 100%, bro. 100%, man. I think that's just the way it is. That's literally the way it is. It, whether there's only one of you in the chat, whether there's 20 of you, 100,000, it doesn't really matter, man. I'm going to be here, you know, regardless. But I digress. Let's get into my predicted lineup for the game people in the chat let me know what your predicted lineup would be for this game this evening we kick off at i think it's 8 8 p.m i'm so used to liverpool playing at like 5 yeah 5 p.m or 5 30 or some stupid time where you just think bro who's rushing home from work to to bloody well watch this man can't you give us like a a good time like a, a solid time but you know it is what it is it is what it is all right cool Let's run through this. So I've already put Keller in goal. I've put Van Dyke there and I've put Wataru Endu. Um, rest of the position. So we'll start off at we'll start off at right back. Um I like I said, I don't really know with the whole Trent thing. I personally just wouldn't start Trent. Um in in the I wouldn't start him anyway. If you're gonna if he is gonna play, I think I would make it more of a case of bring him on at some point in time if he is available to come on just to get the minutes you know back in his legs as opposed to trying to start him in the game he breaks down now we've got to bring on Bradley Bradley breaks down like I can just see Liverpool are just that's just how we are that's just always what seems to happen so I would actually go with for this game I would go with we got Palace at the weekend you know what? I'll go with I'll go with Bradley. I'll go with Bradley. Would I go with Bradley? I'm now, I'm, now I'm rethinking. I, you know, I had a team in my head, but now I'm thinking to myself, would I really go with Bradley? I mean, he's played a lot of games recently. He has played a lot of games. So would I go with Bradley? Uh, if not him, it's going to be Gomez, right? You know what? Gomez didn't play in the last game. And I actually have a choice at left back. Let's go Gomez at right back. Just more, more so... Because I'm just thinking also about Lookman. I am thinking about Lookman because I do think he will be a tad bit of a danger for Liverpool if he's able to, you know, do his thing. So, yeah, I, I think I'll leave it at that. Um, at the back, 
I mean, Canate, I, he was my first choice, but like, I've said this a million times, people. When it comes to Canate, I, I have trust issues. Very, very good defender. We all know how solid he is. We Everyone was calling him one of like the best centre-backs this season when he was going through that period of time when he was actually fit. But he's just always like a game away from getting injured and stuff like that. We've got Palace at the weekend, you know, coming up against, you know, Mateta and, you know, people of that kind of ilk. Do I want him for this game or do I want him for that game? I know Kwanzaa, everyone's, you know, been on his back after the mistake and stuff like that, um, which I think is very, very silly, by the way. Um, I get it. He made a mistake. It's cool, whatever the weather. But I don't think we need to be in a position where we're just slandering. My man's got to turn off the comments on on social media. It's, I don't, it's not that deep, guys. Honestly, we didn't lose the game. And it definitely wasn't his fault why we didn't win the game. I'll tell you that for free. Um, you know what, Bunny? I'll go Konza again. I think alongside maybe um, Joe Gomez would just be a little bit better for him. Um, and why not? You know, I mean, we were all singing his praises before. All of a sudden now, what, he can't play? Uh, left back, I will actually go with Simikas um, in the left back area. Uh, give Robbo a rest um, for the game um, at the weekend. Um, I think that would, to me anyway, that makes the most sense. Um He's only just still kind of coming back from his injury and stuff like that. So I would prefer if we just kind of hold a little bit tight on someone like Robertson. Do you know what I mean? I don't think we need to be rushing him into every single game. I know he's got the intensity back. I know he's got the kind of fuel back and everything like that. But yeah, I'm not trying to, you know, we don't need to run him down if we don't need to. I'm not trying to disrespect. And I don't feel like that back five is a disrespect, so to speak. Still think it's solid enough to be able to, or should be solid enough to be able to do the job against Atalanta. So We'll wait and see. Um, I've got Endo, obviously, of course, in the DM position. Um, now, I, a little birdie told me that Curtis Jones might potentially start this game. So if he is going to start the game, I would actually go with... I would go with... Just trying to think, because there's a play I want to play. Um, I would go with... Should we put Jones on that side? I'm just putting him on that side. Curtis Jones in that position. Um, on the right side, now, of course, everyone's probably just going to think, yeah, play McAllister, which I did think about. But I'm also sitting here thinking, again, I just don't want players to just overplay. Do you know, again, Liverpool are too fragile. We all know what Liverpool's about. We all know what Liverpool's on. We're way too fragile. So I, I, I'm not trying to play these guys too much. Again, not trying to disrespect Atalanta, but I also don't want to be playing these guys way too much. And I've already got Endo in there, Van Dijk in there as well, the Gomez as well. These are all experienced players. So it's not like I'm just picking any random, you know, youngsters. I would play... I'll go with... I think McAllister's is going to play anyway, but I would prefer to go with... No, nah, because I don't want to see him play anymore. I'll go with Gravenberg. I'll go with Gravenberg. Now, do I really want to go with Gravenberg? Do I trust Gravenberg like that? No, you know what? I changed that. Sorry, Grav. Sorry, Grav. You're, you're, you're a baller in that, but no, nah, man. I just need you to just hold tight for a little while, man. I think you've just been a little bit eesh. Do you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, I'll go Zabozola. I'm, I'm happy with Zabozola in there with Curtis Jones coming back um, into the starting lineup. I think that's solid enough. To be honest with you, again, you've got McAllister on literally on the bench. So it's not like it should be too much of a problem. Again, I'm speaking from a point of not to say we can just play anybody, but at the same time, bro, if, if we can't dispatch some of these teams, you know, with these kind of lineups, bro, like what are we all talking about at the beginning of the season about? Yeah, we've got this and we've got that. Also, a little birdie told me as well that Elliot might start. Now, Elliot might actually just start in the midfield area, and it might be Curtis Jones and Elliot in the midfield, you know, with Endo at the back there. But I would actually put Elliot on the right side. And I know straight away what everyone's thinking. Where's Mohamed Salah? I do think that Salah... And, and it burns me, by the way, to say all of this, right? It burns me. But I think with Salah with the form that he's kind of been in recently, crazy because he's still scored or assisted within that time, but that's the GA stuff. In terms of performances, I just look at it and think to myself, when there's the, the, there has to come a point, if he is going to stay at Liverpool next season anyway, if 
he's not performing well. There has to come that point where it's like, okay, you can't always start games if you're not performing well, especially when there's other players who are performing well, when they come on for you in these games. It's, yeah, it, 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 it's it's kind of one of those one of those kind of things. So I would actually just go, you know, with Elliot, if I'm being 100% honest with you. Um, and then up top, uh, I'll go Nunes. I'll go Nunes. Uh, again, like I said, I don't know about Diogo Jota, but I would go Nunes regardless. Um, and then on the left, I'll go Luis Diaz. I'll go Luis Diaz. That still leaves Cody Gappo uh, and Salah on the bench. And I think that's a st- Cody Gappo, Salah, uh, McAllister on the bench to be able to come on and change things if things do need to be changed, in my opinion. Again, I'm not saying that this team is the strongest team. If I'm being like, it's not the strongest team, as we know, there are obviously players missing. But at the same time, I get people are saying, you know, we should go strong and stuff like that. And I I, I agree to some to some extent. But at the same time, I am also a little bit like, mm, do you need to go that strong in these kind of games? Because, again, we've got another game coming up on Sunday. If we pick up an injury or two in this, that hampers us for the game on Sunday. Like, And I feel like, to me, that's more important. And I still feel that like this team should be strong enough to be able to dispatch someone like Atalanta, even still with then having those players on the bench. So, yeah, we'll, we'll kind of wait and see um, on that one. Uh, big up, Zane. Uh, Atalanta are a team that can seize possession to top teams, so this game's pretty easy to predict. They are, I, I agreed. Like I said, um, I don't know if you was in before, I did mention about uh, when they played against Napoli, um, they did concede quite a lot. They definitely had like, 30 something percent possession in that game. So I get that, but they won the game 3 0 because they were very good at soaking up that pressure, hitting them on the counter attack, finding those balls into space, into those pockets of space, players running off. Skamaka played pretty decent in that game. So it, it, they're used to stuff like that against the bigger teams. That's why I'm just, I'm not, again, I'm just trying to look at it. From a non-biased point of view, I think Liverpool should just slap these guys, you, you know, at the end of the day. But at the same time, they do have their threats. And that's what they want to be um, want to do, is they want to, a team to have to come on to them. And if I'm being honest, and if you guys, whether you agree or disagree, I don't know. Liverpool, are, we're not that smart when it comes to trying to figure out little bits and bobs. Like, OK, yeah, well, we need to do this and that to break this team down or whatever. We kind of need the opposition to come out at us. We've seen it. We need them to come out so then we can play into the spaces so then we can counter-attack. That's where I'm a little bit like, mm, you know, kind of thing. Uh, big up, Mark, uh, Kevin. Uh, as soon as you are doing a recap for Arsenal Champions League game next week, I'll be here. If we win, hit the hit the link to me. But if we lose, I'd rather not be <laughs> in any platform. Yeah, yeah, don't worry, man. Don't worry. I'll be doing a reaction to that game. Um, I'll do a... I put, either myself, uh, ends might do one, so maybe jump on there if he if he chooses to do one. Um, but yeah, either way, um, definitely would want to hear from you, especially if Arsenal win. Um, Kevin Mark, uh, we can never question Liverpool's pedigree in European competition. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't think it's something to be scoffed at. Uh, big up Lee Wiz Kid in the morning. Hope you are well. Hope you are well. Uh, big up the Football Talk podcast. Yeah, I'm doing well, man. I'm doing totally well. I hope you guys are blessed. Um, Stefano Atalanta on a too much losing streak, by the way. I know that this, this is what I'm saying. They're on a too much losing streak, but we know what it's like when teams come to Anfield. All of a sudden, Donny's putting up Ronaldinho Ballon d'Or performances, and you're just like, well, where the hell did that come from? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, yeah. Uh, Lee saying not grav uh, games too important. Yeah, I agree. That's why I took him out. It's it, again, he's not someone that we can trust just yet in important kind of games like this, which is kind of sad because Gravenberch is a very good player. Um, and I know we all kind of hoped and wished that he would come in this season, do his thing, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're seeing like, ah, yeah. Because r- remember at the beginning of the season, we were talking like, ah, oh, Bayern Munich made a mistake and. Blah, blah blah yeah that, that that I guarantee that's not the conversation now. In fact, I'm seeing some people say, "Yeah, I can see why Bayern Munich decided to let let Gravenberch go." Yeah, yeah, because of this, that, and the third. And <clears throat> why I agree with some of what they, some of what some people have said in regards to why they would have let him go. Obviously, we don't know the real reason, but other than he just wanted game time, he wasn't getting it over there. 
and he's obviously got significantly more here at Liverpool. But at the same time, I can see there's little things about Gavin Birch that he does need to improve upon, just like basically more or less the entire team, bar like a, a few individuals, because they're all quite young. So, yeah, it is a catch-22. Listen, he's not going to... Liverpool fans, we're, we're, we, we're, we can be patient when we want to be patient, but then we can be impatient when we want to be impatient. So he's one of those where he's in the middle now. You, you know, and I know it's only one season, but we don't know what the next manager, how he's going to fit into that system, whatever system the next manager plays. So it, it could be one of those ones, you know, for someone like Gravenberch. But of course, let's just wait and see. Let's just wait and see. Uh, let uh, let him get some form in first. I, I hear it. I hear it. Uh, big up Angel. Uh, Sunday is simply more important. Yeah, yeah. Like I know Klopp will come out and say he doesn't have one eye on Sunday, but realistically and honestly he technically would have to have one eye on Sunday because you'd be planning especially if, in, if you know in a week you start off on Monday and you know okay we've got two games this week so okay maybe I can play this like he'll be hearing from the medical team he'll be hearing from all the staff you know the, all the experts telling him okay well we've got this kind of game this remember they're all prepping heck I'm doing it now on football manager if <laughs> it do you know what I mean like they're all going to be prepping for the 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 whole week OK, we've got two games, one on Thursday, one on Sunday. All right. So who's fit, first of all, for the game on Thursday? All right. These are the players who can play this amount of minutes. These are the players who can do this, that and the third. OK, cool. Do we think that this player can start the game, but maybe has to come off after 60 minutes in order for him to still be OK enough to recover for that game on Sunday? Because he might be an important player, whether that's Kanate, Trent or whoever else. So I know he says that in press conferences, but... He would have to be looking at the bigger picture. Well, not in the bigger picture. He'd have to look at it in totality. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Lee, uh, this is a European quarterfinal and we could do with 99% of this tie done tonight. Go strong. Don't chance it. I do agree, but yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know, man. I don't know. Uh, Sunday, we will be fine. Uh, Palace are awful. I hear it. I I, I do hear you. I, I'm not even trying to discredit because they kind of are. They play some decent football now under the new manager, but yeah, they are in not so great form. Um, yeah. So you know, let's wait and see. But that's my team anyway. That's the team that I would like to potentially go with. There are a few names in there that if you think, okay, let's go with you know this guy, let's go with that guy. But you know, it's totally really just down to you in terms of whatever. In fact, let me take that back. It's down to clock, whatever he wants to do. Uh, big up, Victor. I miss the entertaining heavy metal football we used to play under clock and Buvach. Yeah, but it was with a bit of nuance to it. Do you know what I mean? There was still football within that when we had that. The more, obviously it was heavy metal at when, at the beginning, then it turned into, all right, did you, don't you guys remember? We used to, at times we played three at the back. <laughs> like people for like, I'd get on to Klopp about tactics and stuff, but I remember he played three at the back a couple of games. So, yeah, man. Emery Chan and that. Uh, we got Lee. Give all the returning players 45 minutes. Uh, stuff them first half. Bring on the lads who need minutes. That could be one way to go. Um, that definitely could be one, uh, one way to go for the game. I, I, again, I don't really know how Klopp wants to... How Klopp kind of wants to pattern it up. But, you know, it'll be, it is what it is. Uh, get through these last bit of comments and then we will head out with my predictions. Uh, Stefano, yeah, looking at their season, they are hot and cold, can be brilliant at times, or they lose not many draws. Yeah, so I think it'll be a victory either way. I don't really see a draw. The only way I would see a draw in a game like this is just purely if we just do not finish our chances because they, they, you know, these Italian teams, man, they know how to sit, they know how to hold games, they're not dumb, they, you know, what I mean, they totally understand how to do that. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see. You know, uh, with that, uh, Lee saying, uh, uh, Ari Grav, uh, Bayern probably did make a mistake, but the lad didn't get a game for a year. Yeah, no, and this is what I'm saying. This is what, that, that, that's why I'm like both sides of it. I understand maybe why they could have potentially let him go, because ultimately, maybe like if he was good enough to be able to force his way into the team, he would have been in a team. Do you get what I'm trying to They were playing other players like ahead of him. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like on other players that maybe at times shouldn't have been playing. So what was his attitude like in training when he wasn't playing for weeks and weeks and weeks? I'm not saying it has to be exemplary. That's impossible. You can't go to a workplace and be told, you know, to be sitting on the sidelines at work and they're always giving, I don't know, the big deals and all the sales to this other guy and you're expected to come in every single morning happy as bloody Larry. Of course not. You're going to be vexed a couple of times. You're not going to be having a great day all the time. So I can understand it from that kind of, you know, perspective. But ultimately, unfortunately, in the, in the game of sport, 
that's where some of these guys are looking at you and saying, well, what's his attitude like? I'm not saying he has an attitude problem, but what is his attitude like when he isn't playing these kind of games? Is he still working hard in training? When he does come on, what does he look like? Is he still applying himself in whatever, even if it's just for two, three minutes? Is he still like little things? But again, on the flip side of it, man ain't really getting games. <laughs> so how do you expect me to get up to that level? Catch 22, man. I do think it's a catch 22. Uh, Kevin saying, uh, I just miss the clock rock and roll football. Hey, listen, man, we're going into a new era right now. We're going into a new era. New era, man. I, I want to see some, the Portuguese Pep Guardiola, what he can do. Uh, big up, Stefan, <clears throat> in the building. Guys, please make sure before we head out here as well that you are smashing the like button. Please, please. I don't. I can't stress how important that is just to smash the like button, man. It pushes it out with, in terms of the algorithm and things like that, and it helps us all content creators massively. Uh, this is probably our best chance of a second trophy. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the easier one to obtain, in my opinion. If I, if I look at it as a whole, it's the easier one uh, for me. Uh, big up Christian in the building. Liverpool should go strong first leg and try blitz Atalanta and then rotate second leg. Second leg, uh, it will be better long term. Atalanta are no mugs, so zero mercy should be shown to them. I'm going to actually take a look. I want to see where they're at in the league table. I just looked at where I just looked at their games as opposed to what they've been doing in Syria are in terms of the league table. I bet they're going to be like some stupid position. Oh, they're six. They're six. They're six. They're five points off fifth. Okay. And they're ahead of Napoli with a game in hand. <laughs> okay, cool. So they're not doing too bad this season. You know what I mean? They're not, they're not that rubbish. It's not that rubbish. Uh, it's turned into trash metal. I hear it. <laughs> I know you're talking about um, Klopp's heavy, me he heavy metal uh, football. But yeah, guys, that is my lineup uh, for this evening's game. So Kelleher in goal. At right back, we've gone with Joe Gomez. The two centre-backs, I've gone again with Kwanzaa and Virgil van Dijk. Um, left back, I've gone with Simikas. Uh, in the midfield, we've gone with Endo, Zabozalai and Curtis Jones. Uh, and then up front uh, in the three, so to speak, we've gone with Elliot. Nunez and Luis Diaz. If you are watching this on the replay, please let me know what kind of lineup uh, you would have gone with. Do you want to go strong? I'm seeing a lot of people say you want um, Liverpool to go really, really strong. I, I'm not against it, by the way, people. I'm really not against it. If you feel going strong is the best option for us, then, you know, Klopp will, will, will go strong ultimately. So we just kind of have to, we kind of have to wait and see. All right, so match prediction scoreline. Um, I think they score at least one, uh, at least one, because Liverpool are just used to conceding goals. Um, <clears throat> I'll go with if he goes strong, I'll go with four one. If he goes with my lineup, I'll go three one. I'll go three one still. I'll go three one. Let me know what you guys think um, in the chat in terms of the scores. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. I guess the final saying there. I remember the pressing the early days of Klopp was two tiers up from what they do now. Listen, listen. Uh, Lee saying four nil to us. Uh, Stefano saying three one. Uh, Philip is saying three one <coughs> as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Stefano, uh, bro, I agree. We we ain't keeping the clean sheet. When do we do that? <laughs> do you know what I mean? When do Liverpool keep clean sheets? Do you know what I mean? And we conceded against Sheffield United. That should give you every indication that Liverpool will be conceding a goal. Um, yeah. And in regards to what you guys are talking about in the chat in terms of Liverpool's heavy metal, heavy metal football that we used to have. Yeah. I, listen, back then it was still quite a new team in terms of understanding what it takes to get to a trophy. And that was one of the things that I used to always think is, it was probably more enjoyable, in my opinion, watching Liverpool back then when we were not champions as opposed to being champions. Sounds weird, right? Because you, that's what your ultimate goal is to become a champion. But because we kind of changed the way we almost done things, and of course, teams ended up trying to wise up to us and, and stuff like that. Players kept getting injured and, you know, things like that. It became not boring in some aspects, but it just became too predictable in my personal opinion. Whereas you guys remember that the year that we, when Salah came and we, and we got top four, um, uh, to top four that season. I mean, we got top four the season before, but in that season, when we got top four, it just felt exciting. 
it just felt like a riot, like the way that we were playing. I felt like it was super exciting in games. You know, it was end to end, but there was still that um, infancy in our development, in our cycle, you know, so to speak. So that that's what I was excited about. Then the 18-19 season, which I believe is Liverpool's best ever season. And we didn't even win the league. But just in terms of if you think about performances that we were putting in, in like if you guys cast your mind back to, you know, a few seasons ago, that season for me, I've never seen Liverpool be so assured, so potent, so confident. And even, and it's one thing I kept saying to people, if you remember during that period of time, you know, people like Roy Key might talk about it quite a lot. You know, when you're in the tunnel and stuff like that, and you stand up against the team, like you're, you're both um, in the tunnel waiting to go out onto the pitch you and you're standing next to each other. Even watching it on TV and a couple of the games that I went to, when I'm seeing the players line up against each other, they just look like monsters. They just look like, like they just look like, mm, like, yo, like these guys are, yo, I ain't trying to fuck with these guys at all. Excuse my language so early in the morning. But I ain't trying to mess with these guys at all. No way. No what? Van Dyke, beast. Matip, beast. Trent and Robbo getting all of those assists. Salamone and Firmino causing havoc. Midfield won't give you a day's rest or a minute's rest, should I even say. It, it like suffocating teams to the point where it was like, I know they couldn't breathe. And we weren't even, there was obviously some games, but we weren't even slapping teams. Like I'm not even saying we're doing what we've done a couple of times this season, when you're five nils or five ones or six. Bro, we were winning like three nil, two nils in a couple of games, one nil against Everton. But we just looked so solid. That's why for me, it was like the best season. And then on top of that, you've got the finishing on 90 whatever points, winning the Champions League, you know, losing the league by that one point. Like that for me, I was like, Liverpool just had to win the league that season. That's why I was happy that we won it the following, but we just had to win the league that season because it, it was just like, yo, like we're, this, that was the best Liverpool team I've ever seen. And ever since then, I've just kind of felt we've shown waves of it, you know, over time. But that's a little trip down memory lane. That's a little trip down memory lane. Um, yeah, so like I said, I'm going to go for tonight's game against Atalanta. I will go with 3-1 to Liverpool. 3-1. Uh, Angel saying, yeah, 2-1, hopefully. Uh, Steven saying, lose 3-2. It'll be another chaotic game. 3-2. Way. Just remember, I'm not the negative one today, guys. It's Steven's taking up that mantle. You can have that. Uh, Philip, uh, I'd love us to keep a clean sheet, but that's as rare as a blue moon. Big man ting. Big, 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 big man ting. Uh, Stefan is asking, do you think he wants to press still? Or were Mane, Firmino, Ginny, Henderson, Fabinho just better at pressing? Yeah, I think... <clears throat> I think one of two things... Well, I think a few things, should I say, not one of two. I think those players that you just named there, they were all better at pressing than the current players that we have now um, because of their makeup of what they were actually really good at. So now we've got the McAllisters, the Zabozalais, uh, the Endos, Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott's and people of that kind of ilk who are somewhat good at pressing in their own way, but they don't have nothing, in my opinion, on the Ginnies, the Hendersons, Fabinho's in their pomp, especially because those players that I've just named, all the ones that we've got now, technically they are better. They want to play a bit more football. McAllister, we know, wants to play football. That's the school that he's come from. Elliot, we know the kind of player that he is now. He doesn't even seem like he's really a winger. Now he looks like, yeah, he kind of wants to play in that midfield area, pick up those pockets of spaces on that right, those right half spaces. That's what he wants to be picking up. Um, Endo, he can press and stuff like that, but Endo is pretty decent on the ball. Do you, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, whereas the Hendersons, Fabinho's, okay on the ball, but they were really there because physically, as athletes, they were, especially Henderson, I know we cuss Henderson, but especially him during a time, you know, where his legs weren't gone, he was an animal. He was definitely an animal in there. Do you get what I mean? So that's why I can understand why Klopp might maybe wants to have, maybe, maybe wants to change the way that Liverpool play football. I kind of get that. But at the same time, I am a little bit like, it's almost like he's trying to mix the two because he's still got some of the old players and then he's got some of the, obviously a lot of the new players. So he's trying to almost mix the two. I almost feel like, bro, you just got to pick a struggle and go with it. <laughs> do you know what I mean? You can't be, you, you, you can't be broke and ugly. Like you do need to just pick, you know, one of those kind of things. So, you know, it is what it is. Uh, Stefano, yeah, the clock football aura been gone for years. Change needed. Yeah. And the thing is, he's tried to adapt. Like, let me not even, you know what I mean? Let me not this clock too tough. Like he has tried to adapt in his ways. 
but I just don't think he's been that successful at it, to be honest with you. Hence why we will have such crazy highs right now, but then the lowest of lows, you know, kind of thing. Like we go to, it's too much of this, in my opinion, you know, in the last couple of seasons, whereas it was always building up. And then we, when we got to 18, 19, 19, 20, those two seasons, it was like, we, we stayed at that, at that peak level. We, we got to the peak level in 18, 19, you stayed there in 19, 20. And then it just, obviously injuries, I get it, but, also, the way that we played, I felt like, you know, did, you know, play a big factor in that. Uh, Stephen saying, clock clean sheets no longer uh, exist. I hear that. Uh, Victor saying, and 18-19 season was when we had prime trend. Like I said, Robertson, Van Dijk, uh, Salah, Mane. Yeah, yeah listen, man, it, it, it was dumb. It was dumb. We was coming up against a mad Manchester City team them times, you know. But with Sane, Raheem Sterling, Aguero, Jesus coming in a bit later, Kevin De Bruyne in his pump, Fernandinho. Yo, Bernardo Silva. This is before Phil Foden. Vincent Company at the back. Yeah, nah. I'm sorry, man. If I if I had to think back, yeah, yeah. Liverpool back then. Yeah, we were on stuff still. I have to admit that. Uh, Philip, uh, big up Lee. Are you having a good morning? I hope Lee, you are having a, a good morning. To be honest, um, Victor, true, bro. That season was when we had, uh, yeah, yeah. All of these, all of these players. Uh, big up Gagan Deep, man, my bro. Uh, as it stands, who you got for the title? Uh, Manchester City. Uh, I, I said it. I, I keep. I've been saying it since the first game of the season. I think Manchester City, for me, will be the team who will lift the Premier League title. Um, I will be surprised if they don't. Um, I think, I'm not even going to say who I think is going to finish second or third, but yeah, I think Manchester City will um, will win the Premier League. I, I just Something tells me that they will just go and they will just, uh, sorry, I, I say something will tell me they'll go click. They're already kind of doing that anyway. They're already, like, they haven't lost in a while. <laughs> Do you get what I'm trying to say? Um, and I don't see them losing between now and the end of the season. Um, and I don't see them even dropping points between now and the end of the season, most importantly. Whereas I do see that for Liverpool and or Arsenal. Um, so, yeah, that's why I'll go with um, Manchester City. But listen, Liverpool are in there. Yeah, I mean, we're in there. Excuse me. Uh, I think PTSD too uh, from Team Burnout. Yeah, 100%, man. 100%. Not really bringing negative, saying it'll be a chaotic game. Listen, they'll call you negative. That's what I'm saying. Like They call me negative if I say that. Uh, GTV, um, I hope the new manager new manager doesn't obsess over signing multifunctional players. I think not having enough players who are specialists cost us down the years and too many moulded into something else. 100% agree. 100% agree. Too many players that, oh, McAllister, yeah, you can play DM. Because we, 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 you didn't, as good as Endo has been, and I've really liked Endo this season, you could have just gone out and signed a better DM who could have just, not, it takes time for anybody to settle into a team, but you got someone who took time to settle in. So you had to play this guy in that position. Curtis Jones, I know now we think he's good and whatever, but you're molding so many of these players. In the end, it's like you're just going to have just multifunctional players. No specialist, no guy who can... Nah, he's a right winger. Nah, he's a central midfielder. Nah, he's like, he can play left wing. And nah, he can play central midfield, you know, kind of thing. And I, and I do think at times it will cost you. You do need to have... I'm not saying you can't have some of those players. Of course you do. You Like... All the top teams have players of that kind of ilk who can play in different positions. Kamavinga out here playing left back, centre back. I'm sorry, too many playing centre back. Like you can do that. I'm not saying you can't, but Vinny plays left wing. That's it. There is no he plays central midfield or attacking midfield. No, he plays left wing. That's it. <laughs> do you get what I'm trying to say? So yeah, I think with certain positions and stuff like that, I think we've tried it too much, you know, over the period of time. Uh, Victor saying Man City is my favourite for the league. Yeah, it's my favourite. I would love Liverpool to win it, but I, I'm not going to lie and say, oh, yeah, I genuinely believe that Manchester City um, will win the league. Um, Hollywood Rock, if City do a 4 P double, treble, are they the best English side ever? they definitely be, in my opinion, they're already the best side I've ever seen in the Premier League era. Um, under Pe But then again, Pep Guardiola is the best manager I've ever seen in this league. Um, yeah. I know the main life from Sir Alex Ferguson. But yeah, Sir Alex Ferguson is is like he's like the godfather of the Premier League because of how long he was actually here in the Premier League. If Pep stayed here that the same amount of time, he would dwarf everything that he's ever done anyway, to be honest with you, in terms of trophy wise. And he plays a way better style of football. And I think he is a better <coughs> excuse me, football manager, so to speak. Um or you know what? he's a better coach. Let me let me let me not disrespect Sir Alex Ferguson. I think he's a better coach in terms of 
when it comes to the football side, just the, just purely the football side of things, yeah, Pep Guardiola every day of the week, not even close. But when it comes to the whole thing, that's where Sir Alex Ferguson, I think, would dwarf someone like Pep Guardiola because Sir Alex Ferguson can deal with everything in surrounding the club. He was the club kind of thing. But, you know, I, I just think Pep Guardiola, for me, for me personally, yes, I will call Sir Alex Ferguson the godfather, but I'm sorry, but some of the football I have seen from, you know, Manchester City, some of the things that they've been doing, you know, since they came to this league, like since they got Pep Guardiola, nah, man, that, that, that's, that, that's my team. That I would think anyway. Uh, Manchester City have the easiest fixtures from now until the end of the season. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, it's a buzzer like Hendo regen. Like, what the hell? Said that at the beginning of the season as well. Uh, back in the day, we had specialists who could be multifunctional. We had specialists who could be multifunctional. I like that. I like that one. I like that one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, last question, and then we will head out of here. Um, Where does Klopp rank in all-time Premier League managers? For me, he is fifth at best. I'm going to do a video on this anyway, but I'll give you a quick answer on that. Yeah, I think fifth. Mm, if he wins the league, though, this season, I'll give him fourth. If he wins the league this season, I'll give him fourth. At the moment, he would be fifth in terms of Premier League managers. Um, yeah, at the moment, I've got Pep, Sir Alex Ferguson, Jose Mourinho, Arsene Wenger, and Klopp. Arsene Wenger, at the end of the day, he won three Premier League titles. Um Compete with that Manchester City team, with that Manchester United team as well. We had more money than them. He was able to buy all the top players, just like Manchester City now. They weren't working with a massive budget, just like Liverpool now. Yeah, I, I'm putting... And and from what um, Arsene Wenger was doing after, when they last won the league, finishing in the top four for that long with Squalacci, Koscielny, <laughs> an in, a guy, Rosicki, who never, ever really played, Yaya Sonogo. And we're crying when we got to play Reese Williams. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I'll put I'll put Arsene Wenger in that in that fourth spot. I'm sorry, no, no, no disrespect to Jurgen Klopp. Uh, do you think LFC fans overrated Klopp? I I don't know what the how they really rate him in terms of Premier League managers. Depends on where they put him, really and truly. Like I'd have to do like a poll and see. But like I said, I'm going to do a stream on that anyway. So, and we'll get the guys in and we'll talk about that. But at times, yes, I do think they overrate him. I, I think they overrate what he has done <clears throat> more than anything else. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's almost like, we, like I said, it's the too far left thing. You, you will rate highly what he's done, which I do. But then it's almost like you don't even see none of the faults. You don't see that he's lost more European finals than he has won them. Like, but we we don't have that conversation because he gets there. So everyone's like, well, but at least he gets there. It was like, well, he's been in four and lost well, uh, lost three of them. And the one he did win was against Tottenham. So, you know what I mean? It, it, it is what it is. Um, Victor, uh, Bob Plays is greater than Sir Alex Fergus and Pep Guardiola. Yeah, yeah, okay. If we go back that, yes, I agree. Bob Paisley is a better, a better manager. Uh, Lee Wizkid, Dom is out of position. He don't play as an eight for... The Magyars? Magyars? Uh, Phillips Spurs are going to have a big say where the title ends up. I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. Are they going to be Spursy or are they going to do something different? If Klopp wins the Premier Europa League, he's top four, two titles and everything. Yeah, yeah. That's what I'm, I I 100% agree. I will be putting him in that top four conversation, but he would never dispel the, the other three that we all know um, would be um, in that conversation. Mustafi. Come on. Come on, come on. We finished fifth last season. Come on. We had way better plays than they've ever had in that period of time. Come on. We, we can't do this. We can't do that. Oh, Magyar is Hungarian for Hungary. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I see. I see. Okay, cool. I'm going to put that down in my notes. I'm going to put that down in my notes. Uh, we also have players who are multifunctional. We could be specialists like Steve Nichol and Mark Lawrence. And yeah, yeah. I, I, I agree. And last one, I hope Manchester City get done for the 115 charges. I think that's a perfect way 
to end the stream, guys. Uh, big up everybody who's obviously joined me um, this early morning. Um, we kick off at eight, so Ends will be doing his um, call-in show at the end of the game. So make sure you guys head on over there um, to check out the call-in show. Um, win or lose, head on over there. Have your say on the game. I think tomorrow morning again, same time, 10.30, I will be dropping the match reaction. So, yeah, it'll be good to chop it up with you, um, you guys, tomorrow morning. Um, got anything else today? Uh, I don't know. No, nah, I don't think. I think today just going to chill. Um, just do um, a few bits and bobs for the rest of the day. Um, and then, yeah, take it from there. So, yeah, hope you guys have a great rest of the day. Guys, make sure you relax. Make sure you chill if you are if you are just chilling. So if some of you are on half term, make sure you just vibes for the day. The weather don't even look too bad, although I did see a speck of rain earlier on. Make sure you guys smash a like. Make sure you do share all of this kind of stuff out. Please, please, please. Again, all of this stuff helps the channel. Goodbye and God bless. Peace.